All right, welcome back. If you were able to uh, make it to this particular section of the video, uh, may the Most High bless you. Before I continue on here for a second, uh, many of you know me to be a very passionate speaker because I'm very passionate about the things that I, I speak about. And so you're seeing a different dynamic here this morning, um, um, a different manifestation of Pastor Dow here this morning because I, I'm trying my best to be in a, a teacher mode. You know, there are different, you know, there's a difference between preaching, ministering, teaching, and hearing and listening. Um, and so I'm trying to teach here this morning. So let, let's go ahead and let's get right on into it. And we will um, say we're going to pick up and we're going to um, actually talk about some of the things that we have believed in tradition and we have found them out to not be true. Excuse me. All right. I need you to get your Bible and go to Genesis, the seventh chapter. And I'm actually going to start at the first verse. And the first thing I'm going to do is ask you a question here this morning is, is number one, did Noah in his time um, and when the Most High sent all of the animals on the ark, when God sent all the animals on the ark, did he send them on the ark two by two of every kind like traditional Christianity teaches us? Is that the truth? And were there only one male and one female and one male and one female. You know, it's been so long um, since I, I've dealt with things like this. I have to actually try to go back in my mind to see what traditional Christianity teaches. But the question is, is did they go on two by two of every kind? So we're going to find out and see from the record itself and see what it says. Because tradition teaches us, and when we see the pictures, that they, they teach us there was two males and two females uh, of the animals. And when we, the children see the pictures, um, we're bought up that way and so we're going to see what the book says All right, and I have my King James version of the Bible right here Genesis chapter 7 starting in verse 1 and the Lord said unto Noah come down all thy house into the ark for thee have I seen righteousness before me in this generation or righteous before me in this generation of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens did y'all see that did y'all hear that did you read it? Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens. The male and his female. And the beasts that are not clean by two. Y'all hear that? The male and his females. So what God told Noah, what the Lord told Noah was that there were of all the clean beasts, all the beasts that were clean, you take by sevens. And all the beasts that were not clean, you take by two. And what's the representation that we usually have on our pictures and, and what we've been told um, as a child growing up? Um, so we see that Christianity has adopted to take the position of the two, which would be the unclean. So the truth is, they did not go on the ark two by two of every kind. And, and I would ask that you would read all the rest of the chapter in context so you can gain an even better understanding. But the truth is, is that they were not taken on the ark two by two of every kind. There were seven clean beasts, and this was already established before there was a such thing as a dietary law. And then there was two unclean beasts. The seven clean beasts, we can liken it to seven cows. And the unclean beasts, we would liken it to two swine or pigs. All right. So that's just one. Um, now, the... The second question I want to propose to you is this. Did the Most High, or God, um, did he give the Jews the Ten Commandments? You see, that's what we're taught here in, in traditional Christianity. As a matter of fact, there are Messianic realms that actually teach that. Now, the truth is, um, there were no such things as Jews. Did you hear what I said? There was no such thing as Jews when the commandments were given. Did you hear what I said? No Jews. They were only Hebrews and they were only Israelites. Am I making sense? Now, we're just sticking with the book and the order of it. And if you want to go to the context and, uh, and the text and you want to find out when the Jews began, then you may want to go over to Second Kings, the sixth chapter, um, if my memory serves me correct. But at the time of the giving of the commandments, there was no Jews. There were the 12 tribes of Israel. 
Now, you have to go back and check that out for yourself to see if what I just got finished saying is so. All right? Because it is this making sense? All right. Now, question number three, or I'm going to say proposition number three, or what we're going to get to here, and we have to go this way in order to, before I get to the um, the question about, you know, answer your question about Christians. I'm laying a little groundwork, and I'm actually going to hit the Christian thing first before I hit the Israelite thing. All right? Now, um, question number three is, is was Abraham a Jew? We need to know this. We need to know what this Bible says right here. Because, you know, it, we if we accept this as the truth, we need to know what it says. Was Abraham a Jew? I mean, that's what we're taught in Judeo-Christianity here in the Western world. And this culture teaches us that. But the truth is, the Bible never referenced Abraham to being a Jew. As a matter of fact, it continually tells us over and over again that Abraham or Abram was a Hebrew. Did you hear what I said? He could not have been a Jew. And the reason why is because he had not yet had Isaac. And Isaac had not yet had Jacob. Did you hear what I said? And Jacob had not yet had his name changed to Israel. And the 12 patriarchs was not yet born out of Jacob's loins. Am I making sense? So there were no Jews on the face of the planet Earth when the Most High or God spoke to Abraham. So Abraham could not have been a Jew. As a matter of fact, the Bible teaches that Abraham was a Hebrew. Now, is not Abraham the father of faith? Yes or no? You answer that question, all right? Now, um, the Bible speaks about a rest day, not a day of worship. You are to worship the Father every day. Did you hear what I said? And so, the Most High, or God, He gave the Israel's children, He gave Israel's children the holy seventh day Sabbath. And before he gave them that Sabbath day, he actually used it as a test commandment to see if Israel's children were going to obey his laws or not. And we see that recorded in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 8 through 11. Now you're going to have to go and read that for yourself. So, he did not give us the first day a week like traditional Western, Greco-Roman, European Christianity has taught us. And this book never makes reference to a first day Sabbath or a first day rest. It only talks about the Sabbath from Genesis to Revelations. And it is a commandment that the Most High or God himself spoke. And he said that he would not alter nor change anything that is gone out of his lips. Now the question is, is, is if he did not repeal this seven day Sabbath, then who did it? And why is the whole Western world deceived, the Western Christian world deceived into believing that it has been changed and he has given us another day uh, called the first day of the week or Sunday. You see, people can make this Bible, and I've learned this over the years, say whatever they want it to say, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's true because they say it. You can just about um, spin and twist and warp and distort and tell a story uh, from any perspective. Um, but that does not mean that it is actual, it's factual, and it's truthful, not according to the text. All right. So, we, we've, you know, I presented a few things here. Um, so far, and I'll present one more last thing. If you go into your Bibles and you turn to Acts, the 12th chapter, verse 4, uh, you're going to notice that there's a word in there. All right? There's a word in there. All right? And I will read what Acts 12, 4 says. It says, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quartonians of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. 
Now the question is, we see that the word Easter is in there, but is that an accurate translation just because it is written in our Bibles? Well, what we're going to do is actually go to the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And we're going to find out and see what it has to say about that word. Because, you know, a long, long time ago, probably about close to 20 years ago, I looked at that word. And the reason why I looked at that word was, is because I had in my mind, now you have to understand, Pastor Dow has been keeping the Sabbath um, for almost 20 years. I have been um, keeping the commandments ever since that I've been filled with his Holy Spirit. Um, and so I understood from my own personal studies when I started reading this this Bible from Genesis to Revelations and when I read that Abraham was a Hebrew, that automatically let me know who this Bible was for and who it was written to. I, I already understood. So Abraham was a Hebrew, Isaac was a Hebrew, Jacob was the Hebrew, as a Hebrew, Moses was a Hebrew, as well as Jesus, Peter, and Paul. They were all Hebrews. And that's what this Bible is written about. It's a historical record, and it's the word of the Most High, or God, to the Hebraic people. And so, I begin to wonder. Now, I know that the Hebrews, according to the history that I read in Samuel and Kings and Chronicles, that they never celebrated Easter. Um, so I actually, that inspired me because being a student of the word, I had to go and check it out and look it up. So I went and looked it up. And when I looked it up, it's in your Greek lexicon, Strong's number 3957. And that word is Pesca. That word is Pesca. And that word Pesca, it comes from an Aramaic origin. And it is the word Passover. Did you hear what I said? And it goes back to the Israelites um, custom to the actual Passover lamb. Now you have to go back into the Torah or the first five books of Moses to understand um, the Holy Feast days. All right, But I just wanted to let you know that that word Easter is a mistranslation. It shouldn't be there. Because how can you go look up that word and it should give you a direct reference to Easter itself, but it doesn't. So you notice that a lot of the newer Bibles or the King James Version as well as some of the newer accurate translations, they have actually taken the word Easter out and put the right word Passover in there. And also, did you know that Easter only appears one time in the New Testament, that word, and, and that's where it is? But yet the word Passover Passover is actually um, translated in this word 28 times in the New Testament. Did y'all hear what I said? 28 times you can find that word. So I just thought I'd bring out these truths right here to let you know what perspective I'm coming from. Because you see, it's coming to the knowledge and acknowledging the truth that will help you to be more godly. It will help you to be able to uh, cross over that that uh, unseen line called tradition. Um, and it would help you to advance further in your knowledge of Christ. So I just thought that we would go ahead and we will lay out a, a, a couple of, of those perspectives and groundwork from the beginning. And we'll take another break here and we'll get right into um, the word Christian in the next video.